lies above 35,000 feet. I hope everyone is doing good and staying safe at home. Today, we have one of our extremely proficient aviation and grooming trainer, Ms. Lorelai Vandagat with us. I hope you all are really keen to hear her encouraging journey. Let me add her to the show. Good evening, Prachi. Prachi, I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? No, you're a bit soft, Prachi. Just give me a minute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Perfect, Prachi. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Prachi. How about you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, are you excited for the show? Yeah, I'm extremely excited to share my journey with everybody. Well, great. With the same excitement, I think let's start with the first question. What do you say? Okay, already, Prachi. Okay. So, Lorelai, I'm really interested to know, like, how did your cabin crew journey started? Like, when did you decide you wanted to become an air hostess? Was it your childhood dream? Actually, Prachi, to be honest, uh, yes, it was my childhood dream. You see, I have traveled a lot with my parents. So on when, when traveling with my parents, I've come across a lot of flight attendants. And the way they looked so groomed and, you know, so beautiful, I used to want to be just like them. So I used to get back home and dress up like them and pretend to be like them. But then the years passed by and, you know, I did my first standard followed by my graduation. And when doing my graduation, I also took a job to uh, be a GSA for Kenyan Airways and British Airways. But somehow that didn't really, you know, it wasn't me. I felt like stuck behind a desk. So in the meantime, a friend of mine, yeah, she was opening up a boutique and asked me if uh, I wanted to join her. And I said yes. And I really liked that job because it was not interaction with clients and so and then at the same time my mother's friend okay uh, she approached me and said uh, oh, why don't you try being a flight attendant with Emirates uh, because her daughter also used to fly with me so I grabbed that opportunity I gave her my resume and it took Emirates around three to four months to give me a call and they called me to Delhi where they had an interview. There were around 200 plus, you know, um, candidates. And on that day, only five of us were chosen. And I was one of them. So it started from there. Oh, wow. It's like, so exciting. So exciting. Uh, as you know, Franklin is a recruitment partner of Emirates Group. And many of our students were also placed in Emirates. Uh, sorry, Prachi, I didn't get that again. Yeah, as you might be aware, Franklin is a recruitment partner of Emirates Group. And many of our oh, students yes. are also placed in Emirates. Yes, uh, Prachi, I'm very, very aware of that because in 2019, when Emirates came last to India to recruit cabin crew, I was really, really lucky and fortunate to be with uh, Franklin and a team member for the interview proceeding. And yes, I'm aware that they are partners with Emirates. I'm sure you must have enjoyed the process. Totally, totally. It was really, really nice. It was nice. Okay, so as far as I know, Emirates is the largest airline and the flag carrier of the UAE. And it's like a, you know, dream workplace for many. I'm really eager to know here, like, how was your experience with Emirates? Was it good? Like, how was it? 
Okay, so I uh, basically I've flown with Emirates for nearly 17 years. It had become my home and my family. I started off my cabin crew journey as a grade two, that is you work in economy. And then I worked up the ranks on becoming a person. I was really fortunate to have fantastic and supportive um, managers and trainers who helped me along my career. Emirates is one of the leading airlines in the world, and I'm really fortunate, uh, you know, and grateful being a part of that team. Uh, their training is uh, intensive and also very professional, and it really enhances one's ability. I would say it had a major, major positive impact on me. I have such, such fond memories of Emirates. Uh, you know, a journey that will never be erased from my memory. It's so true. Actually, you know, some memories can never be erased. And that too, you have worked there for like 17 years, which is a very long time. Yeah, extremely, extremely long time. And I think if you love something, what you're doing, time just fly by. Yeah, true. It really flies by. You know, I always feel that uh, if you enjoy what you're doing, yeah, if you like get your dream job, yeah, then time basically, there is no time. You just enjoy every moment of it. And that's exactly what happened with me. Well, uh, Lorla, you know, there are many faults of being a cabin crew. You tell me what perks did you enjoy the most? As Emirates is one of the finest career after all. Okay, so when you join Emirates, uh, they give you accommodation. So I was lucky to have shared a two-bedroom apartment with my flatmate. Uh, you also have pickup and drop. Yeah, so they pick you up for your flight and they drop you for your flight. When you climb up the grades, yeah, when you become a senior in Emirates, they also provide you with a single accommodation as well. The other perks, I would say you get a lot of discounted tickets. Yeah, you also get tickets for your spouse if you're married and also for his or her parents. Uh, you all over Dubai at certain outlets, you also get uh, discounted uh, like, your, you know, your makeup products, uh, discounts in salons. You also have free membership in gyms, uh, in clubs, yeah, uh, restaurants, coffee shops. You also have major discounts in duty free all over the world as well and another very good thing is if you want to travel as a passenger so you need a visa for that particular country so even that the process of the visa also takes around two days and even if to renew your passport as well being cabin crew they renew it for you in two days so yes there was loads and just loads plenty of discounts oh my god you know gyms health clubs, coffee shops, well, it's a complete package. I wish I could get such discounts. <laughs> yeah, you tend to miss the discounts once you leave because then there are no more discounts. That's all. <laughs> and you know, when we have to plan a trip, we plan it as per our visa arrival. And for you guys, it's like only 24 hours. It's like a dream come true. Yeah, that's also, I think, partially because, you know, being cabin crew, you need your passport when you travel. So that is why the process of, you know, hurrying up with a visa is much, much quicker. Okay, nice. Okay, so uh, before going on to the next question, Lorelai, I think your voice is uh, echoing a bit. There is an echo. Uh, yeah, there is a slight echo. Okay, okay. Uh, can't it Can be, I do anything uh, from my side? I'm sorry? Can I do anything from my side to avoid the echo? Uh, I think uh, uh, we won't be able to avoid it as of now. Okay. Anyways, let's move on to the next question. Let's move on okay. to the next question. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as you were telling me, uh, you were based in Dubai. So, how was your life uh, different in Dubai than India? Since you have spent most of your childhood in India and for a job you have moved to Dubai, how did the change build? How was the change? 
See, when I first, um, you know, moved to Dubai, when I first joined Emirates, I was really, really homesick. I just missed my home. And the sad thing is, I didn't even know how to cook. I was an absolute disaster when it came to cooking. I was so terrible in the kitchen that literally, if I even tried to cook a dal, you know, the onions used to float on top. It looked like onion soup and not dal. Okay, so my flatmate, really nice with her. Uh, you know, she helped me out. She said, okay, I'll do the cooking for you. And, you know, we worked out a deal over there. But besides that, Dubai as a place, it's uh, really, really beautiful. It's, you know, got a lot of life in it. Um, there are loads of shopping malls in Dubai. And uh, also besides that, Dubai is like this melting pot of cultures. So, you know, there's so many different nationalities, everything working in Dubai. And it's just everybody's so tolerant and it's so peaceful. Besides that, you know, with our flight times, we used to have, um, you know, night flights and early morning flights. So even in that aspect, the city is very, very safe. Yeah, so I really, really enjoyed my time and what I spent in Dubai. It's such a great experience. And Dubai is actually a very magnificent city. And I think one of the safest place to live in. The safest, it's really clean, really organized. And, you know, there's everybody who is over there. Yeah, they all come for work. So, yeah, you also have this, you know, you respect everybody in that city. Right. And even I think the buildings, they are designed in such a way, it looks like they're touching the sky. And yeah. you know what? Even we have a center in Dubai. We have a Franklin center in Dubai. Yeah, I'm aware of that as well, Prachi. Nice. So, uh, Laura, you're very lucky. I think you've spent 17 years of your life in Dubai. And during your flying tenure, but I think you might have like visited to multiple places. Okay, so out of those places, if you have to choose mm -hmm. any one place, which is that one place you always look forward to? Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, I've been to many places and there are many places that I really like because all countries, I would say, has their own beauty and essence. But if I had to have to choose, I would say Germany because I find that very picturesque. Especially during uh, the winter months, they have these Christmas markets and there's loads of things to buy from the Christmas market. And I have to choose one more country, and that would be Australia. Because to me, Australia has this different vibe. It's very, very different. The people are different. The fashion is different. It's always bubbling. There's always life in Australia. Plus, there's so much one can do in Australia. You have, like, Universal Studios. You have SeaWorld. And they have fantastic beaches out there. So, yes, it would be Germany and Australia for me. Wow, even I would love to visit these places during Christmas. It's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Sounds true. actually very beautiful. And I think uh, there's also a shopping festival in Dubai. Yes, Prachi, the shopping festival in Dubai starts mid jan to mid-February and I would say the whole city is just bustling with so many you know tourists coming into the city because Dubai offers you know major discounts in everything so your malls are like everything discounted your electronics are discounted uh, very good hotel deals in fact even uh, Emirates offers good deals for family like I think you buy your ticket with them and you get a visa done as well so there's a lot of chaos in the city good chaos and loads and loads of things you can shop during the shopping festival. A great time to visit. I can completely imagine the scenario. It must be very crowded during that time. And there's a lot of tourists very, very travel to crowded. Dubai during that time. Which actually yeah, I I think eventually makes Dubai airport one of the busiest airport. True, it is. It is one of the busiest airports. And the Dubai airport is also a shopping hub and it offers a wide range of luxurious brands. By the way, Laura, what is your favorite brand? Um, I honestly, if I had to wear something, I would always say it's what you wear 
you know you you basically the way you carry yourself that makes fashion you can buy uh, a thousand, uh, you know you can spend a bomb on a shirt and still look horrible if you don't carry yourself well but when it comes to accessories and perfumes then i have a few brands like i like gucci i like prada i like bulgari yeah these are my few brands that i do like wow such awesome brands i think these days our youth is all about gucci and other luxurious brands only <laughs> so apart from such luxurious brands and shopping i'm sure you must have come across multiple celebrities so how was your experience with them like were they friendly or how did they carry themselves i'm really interested to know okay so uh, yes i have traveled with a couple of celebrities one that comes to mind uh, is uh, mr shoaib akhtar that is the pakistani cricketer uh, uh, he's a bowler on field he is absolutely aggressive yeah but yeah. when you he actually travels as a passenger he is just so calm and so timid a, a complete you know change from the field and what he is on board i also have had the great pleasure of flying with his highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Said Al Maktoum uh he is the CEO of Emirates Airline and i remember the person tell me that you need to have to go and ask him what he wants to drink and i was so 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 nervous that you know i just started trembling like a leaf out there mm-hmm. to even ask him that what he want to drink and i don't think the words came out and he just smiled at me and said you know get me uh if you can get me a coffee and water and I went back to the galley and I knew that I had really messed up everything but he was thara thara gentleman uh I've also I flown with I Amir think so if even I would have been in no place and I have met the hannes I would have trembled I would have felt the same oh I I just felt everything like shaking around me it was like a mini earthquake that I was going through so that's what it felt like And yes I've also flown with Mr Anil Kapoor yeah um uh, amazing i mean he just doesn't seem to age he just looks flawless all the time and i've also had the pleasure to travel with uh, Umla you know the rangila girl yes yeah her skin is beautiful it's like porcelain white skin oh i think our students can also take some tips from her surely she must be having some secret ingredients that she puts on her face for sure and i really wanted to ask like you might have met adil kapoor few years back does he still look mm-hmm. the same uh completely just the same i think he is one of those actors that just seem to get better with age you know he yeah, just he looks so much backwards <laughs> yeah he is aging backwards yeah. so now the so question is ask Yeah, thoroughly. Another question we should ask is secret to me. Well, uh, Lorelai, other than celebrities, you might have met people from different culture and different background. So, how did you feel while working in a multicultural environment? Any cherishable memory you would like to share with us? Uh, a multicultural environment is, I would say, a good environment to work with because you know you start to learn a lot from other cultures. You know their habits, their ways of thinking. It opens your mind into a broader aspect. Um, yes, I did have loads of memorable moments. Uh, one which was flight from uh, London to Dubai. A gentleman came to us and asked us that he wanted to propose to his girlfriend. and what could we do as cabin crew and so we asked the captain if he could make the announcement and he would come on the pa and you know ask the lady to marry him which happened and you know everybody cheered him it was a very very happy moment for them and another time i like to celebrate is with the kids uh because when it's their birthday we offer them a cake and uh, when we come out with the cake and we think to them and we give it to them there's a lot of fresher and excitement on their faces we click photographs for them so that's also a charitable moment wow uh, actually lorelai i missed the last one there was some network issue so i missed the oh. last part can you please repeat that 
Kasimo, but it's no worries, Prachi. Uh, we also celebrate a lot with children. When it's somebody's birthday, we provide them with a cake. So especially when they're children, they get really excited when you come out into the cabin and you're singing to them, you know, with the cake. Yeah, the excitement and the happiness in their eyes is, it's amazing, so completely amazing. <laughs> Actually, after hearing your experiences, I really wish I could travel in Emirates during my birthday and get such a beautiful surprise. Actually, you know, Prachi, there is an option. When you do book with Emirates, they have a, uh, a food option. Yeah, like you can choose your special meal. You can also choose a cake. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a birthday. You could be wishing somebody just congratulations, bon voyage. So yeah, do that. When you do travel, just wish yourself congratulations or even bon voyage. Yeah, and you'll have your cake presented to you on both the accounts. I will surely keep that in my mind. Well, uh, Lorelai, uh, Kevin Crew is such a fascinating job, so glamorous and attractive. But you know, uh, every job comes with some difficulties, some challenges as well, as well as responsibilities. So what about you? Did you face any such challenging or difficult scenario? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, in fact, I would say most of the time, uh, as cabin crew, we all face a lot of medical issues. You know, we're always giving oxygen to passengers or passengers feeling faint or, you know, a headache. Those are your basic, like, medical issues that you have. But I remember once a passenger, he had an epileptic fit and he had it for, you know, three times during that flight. The flight was only three hours. And he managed to get this fit like every half an hour to 40 minutes he was fitting. And he was, you know, traveling alone. So we somehow managed to cope with it. Another time, I remember we were coming back from Karachi. Uh, I was Bursa at that time. And, you know, we were so ha happy. It was the last leg of our flight. And uh, we were all ready to take off. And then suddenly we heard this big bang on the left hand side engine. And the aircraft came to a screeching halt. At that time, you know, I could just see my life flash to me like a negative. Yeah, like a photo negative. And uh, all of a sudden, I went into photo mode. And, you know, I started shouting out the commands like, bend down, hold your knees, bend down, hold your knees. And all the cabin crew in unison were you know, shouting the same command. When the aircraft did come to a complete stop, it's one of our SOPs that we have to check the outside condition, no fire, no smoke, and wait for the captain's call. And that call, he would tell us whether we had to evacuate or everything was okay. To our luck, everything was fine. But waiting for that call seemed like forever. Though it didn't, he called really quickly, but just waiting for that call seemed forever. So we were lucky on that particular day. Nothing really happened. It was just a bird hit, so the people was aborted. It's really brave of you guys. You have responsibility of every passenger on board. So brave of you. True. True. You never know what can happen. Yeah. We have to be very, very aware when it comes to cabin So big thank you to you as well as all the flight attendants for making our journey so smooth and pleasant. Thank you. Okay, so Lorela, I'm very sure you must have worked really very hard to reach the position where you are today. So uh, do you have any success mantra or any secret ingredient? which you would like to share with our audience? No, I actually don't have any mantra or anything, but I would just say one thing for sure is treat people the same way you like to be treated. Yeah, and never judge a book by its cover. Like, you know, don't just judge people by the way they dress or the way, you know, they look or whatever. Just be nice to people, that's it. Amazing. So simple. I think we all must adapt it. True. <laughs> so, uh, Sorala, you know, every job gets tedious after a point of time. And I'm sure you guys might have some boring days as well, you know, especially during the long flights, like flights which are of 
12 hours 15 hours so what did you guys used to do for fun okay so as um, you know when you have uh, a break between two services uh we generally have to monitor the cabin every 10 10 minutes just to ensure that everything is safe but uh in between we generally like to you know just gather up in the galley uh but naturally a lot of gossip happens uh, of what's happening in the world the main general topics we talk about but one topic that i honestly used to love talking about we always used to engage in ghost stories so we used to talk so much about the haunted hotels the haunted places any incidents on board or anything we used to love talking about that and it came to such an extent that by the time you went to your hotel room yeah my room seemed like diwali yeah because all the lights would be on i couldn't see with the lights off i used to have the passage light on and the bathroom light on and i also used to have the um, tv on so if i did hear any noises i used to blame it on the television so that's what we used to do okay sounds really fun i was thinking let us also have some fun what about a small game of uh, this or that oh sounds good okay so i will ask you a question and you and well, i will give you a two question, options for that okay so you have to okay. select one option okay okay so i can change can I? oh no 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 not allowed not at all <laughs> okay fine okay okay so can we start yeah for sure okay so okay are you a morning person or a night person okay prachi uh, what do you think well I think you are a night person. You are a hundred percent wrong. Right. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> wrong. Okay. I'm a <laughs> I'm a morning person. I I like to get up. I I like to keep fit. Yeah, and I feel if I get up in the morning, I get so much out of the day. So yeah, I'm a morning person. well i think when you get up in the morning the whole day is so productive so yeah it's a good option mm. it's a good thing you get up at morning you are a morning person <laughs> well uh, lord lai mm. would you love to would you prefer being a passenger or a pilot passenger definitely a passenger as a passenger you can relax you can watch a movie or you can stretch your legs um, you know i would love to be a passenger Well, I think I would also love to be a passenger. I would love to sit back and enjoy the view rather than being on the yeah, driving seat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so are you a coffee person or a tea person? Coffee, coffee all the way. I do not like tea. I only like herbal tea, but I'm an absolute coffee person. I remember I actually. I need five cups of co- coffee to keep me going, but you know, but I've actually cut down, so it's come down to two now. Yeah, actually, coffee definitely helps. It boosts up the mood. I love it. <laughs> okay, so do you prefer cooking, or you prefer being cooked for? Prachi, I told you I'm Miss Disaster in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I I. cook to survive okay? okay and if you ever come to my house and i give you something to eat and you're alive you have survived i rather <laughs> order <laughs> i rather order cooking and me somehow not happening okay. i think sometimes it's okay to you know uh, sit on a dining table and just enjoy the food rather than cooking Yeah, true. Yeah, just to relax and get somebody else to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, are you a sneaker person or do you prefer heels? Um, I like wearing formal shoes. I believe. Lorla. Prachi, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah I can you hear, hear me now. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I, did you uh, 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 got my question? Yeah, I did get your question. I I would prefer okay. wearing uh, 
on the shoes. Um, I do not like wearing sneakers. The only time I wear sneakers is, you know, if I have to trek, then I would wear sneakers. But basically, for my shoes. Okay. So uh, I think this is the one of the most difficult questions which I'm going to ask you now. Would you prefer okay. flying or turning invisible? Hmm. <laughs> Okay, uh, flying. I would not like to turn invisible. Yeah, because I feel if you turn invisible, you are hiding from something. So I would rather fly. You know, this is what I would like to do. Actually, I can see that in you. You have already like fulfilled your dream of flying. Totally. I wish I could fulfill it a little bit more, but ah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, will you prefer online shopping or shopping in a store? Definitely shopping in a store because I've been through major disasters with online shopping. Either it doesn't fit right, too big, too small, problems with the material. And plus when you go shopping in a store, you have time to, you know, just generally gaze around and then, you know, you can just sit back and have a coffee. There's so much things you can do when you go to a store. Right. I think going to a store is uh, one of the best options. You can always, you know, try the products and then buy them. And it saves time as well. Yeah, yeah, it does. Because, you yeah, know, online, if something doesn't fit, then the whole process uh, is never ending. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. You know, you have to return it, exchange it. It's very time consuming. Okay, so Lorelai, do you prefer working alone or working in a team? I would say team. I, I just like being with people, I like working with people. Uh, I like people giving in their inputs and ideas. So I'm a complete uh, team worker person. Yeah, even I think teamwork is always productive. It's good to work in a team. Generally, yeah, it's more productive. So uh, do you prefer uh, your natural look or your makeup look? <laughs> Oops, natural. I'll tell you why. Um, you know, there was once a friend of mine, um, absolutely beautiful looking, but she put on a lot of makeup. And one day she decided to go, you know, totally natural. And when people saw her, they actually thought she was sick and she wasn't sick. It was just that she didn't have, you know, that much makeup on. And, uh, you know, from that day onwards, I said, just wear the basic don't cake yourself so much but yeah so therefore I go for a natural look. Only when it's during flight you have to do it because of the lighting system and stuff but any day I would prefer the natural. I think you will look gorgeous whether with makeup or no makeup you will look pretty. You will look mm -hmm. really pretty. <laughs> okay so Lerolai would you prefer a uh, journey or the destination? Uh, I would say if journey. I give you, because, one option. you have to select one, only one. I would say journey because you have to take that initial step to go to the destination. So for me, it would be journey. Plus, the journey is really interesting if you have interesting people traveling with you. So right. definitely, it would be the journey. Okay. Okay. So okay, since uh, you prefer journey, okay. But my next question is about de uh, destination. So oh, what okay. will you prefer? <laughs> a beach or a hill station? Ah, uh, hill station. Definitely hill station. Because uh, beaches are nice, but since I suffer a lot with headaches, so I, I like the coolness of the hills. I think it's so pretty. So yeah, I'm a complete hill station person. How about you, Prachi? What do you prefer, beach or hill station? Uh, I'm also a mountain person. I love hills. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay, so, well, uh, this was a very fun round. And I really wish I could do more of this. But we will have to wrap up this conversation. Okay. okay. So before yeah. that, here is my last question to you. Mm -hmm. So Lorelai, if you have to like summarize your journey of uh, your last 17 years, so how was your life above 35,000 feet? Uh, my life above 35,000 feet was, I would say, was simply amazing. Uh, uh, working for Emirates has been a complete 
complete life changer for me. Uh, they, uh, you know, people generalize like uh, only a uh, cabin crew. All they do is basically look nice and serve. But they have to realize uh, a cabin crew, they put in so much of hard work. Uh, they are forever helping passengers all along the time. Uh, they, um, you know, they are trying to cope with fatigue. Uh, many a times you go on a flight without any rest. Uh, you also miss out on birthdays, festivals, celebrations. But on the other side of being positive, I would say, being a cabin crew has really helped me to be independent, approachable, uh, to solve problems in difficult situations. Also, you become more accommodating and sensitive to, you know, different nationalities and culture. Uh, I would say well, I've met, met so many amazing and beautiful people along this journey who up to date I'm still friends with. So, like, if given a chance, I, if I could relive this moment, of being a cabin crew, I would definitely choose it again. Amazing. So amazing. I must say your journey was so inspiring. Even I feel motivated. I really wish Thank you. if I could get back in time and I would have opted for this career. Maybe I would have opted. It is so glamorous, so adventurous and it has so many perks. You get to meet celebrities. You get so many discounts you get so many perks. It's really a very nice career to opt for. It's an absolute fantastic career to go for. Well, Lorelai, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was so insightful and fun. It was really great for to have you on the show, have this discussion with you. And uh, thank you everyone, those who are watching us. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. So guys, this is the last episode of Life Above 35,000 Feet. We will be back with some more exciting live shows focusing on the booming industries. Stay tuned. Follow our page for more update. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Lorelai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Stay you so everyone. much. Everyone. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.